Welcome back to the Coaching Couch Podcast. Today we have Simon. This is Simon. I am Simon. Simon, tell us what you do. Where do you um, come from? I run a company called Strong Media. We now do all your videos, your you YouTube, your short form content. If you're wondering why my content's got so professionally made and brilliantly planned over the last... <laughs> how long have we been doing it for? Uh, we've been sort of well we've been working together since yeah January, but how long but have like, we been doing like the, the yeah, all the content how long has all the yeah, content been, been going through i think it's been seven weeks now is that all it's, it's been it's only been seven it weeks it seemed like yeah. longer yeah it's been i bet seven people weeks. say that to you all the time yeah, though, don't <laughs> yeah, <it's fucking> sick, <laughs> yeah. yeah no it's been seven weeks but we've been working together since uh i think it was about this time last year wasn't we've it? we've actually it? technically been working together for yeah. over a decade yeah because we which we didn't realize yeah we, I, I know you've mentioned the lifeguard job in previous podcast episode but yeah i was the uh, personal trainer at virgin active when you were a, you were a lifeguard i was that was the glory you days know why there. i did i actually i worked i worked in two separate places i worked for the council because the wage was really good the, at the council i was getting like nine fifty an hour and then virgin actually paid shit it was that minimum wage but i was at uni and we were in fallowfield yeah, like over great. the road and it's the nicest gym and the gym was like 50 quid a month and i was like fuck paying for that yeah. so technically i did one shift a week <laughs> Oh, so I, it paid for your gym membership. I did membership. one shift a week and then it paid for my gym membership and I got a little bit of dough. Oh, it was, so, a, top, it was a top gym, that. It was a really good gym. Yeah, great gym to for... be a personal trainer in. So easy to pick up clients. Oh, well, you just went to weren't it? Yeah, everyone had money in there. Have you been in since? Yeah, it's, it's a, a now, uh, field it? health now. What's yeah. it like? Yeah, it's exactly the same. Is it? Same staff. Really? Yeah, Vicky's still there. The manager. Oh my God. Yeah, she, right. yeah they are. Do you remember Nikki? Yes. The fitness manager, she was right? My manager. Right, Nikki looked me in the eye one day and said, You know, there's no money in fitness. Oh, was that her you've Fuck mentioned? Off, it? Was Nikki? it Nikki? Yeah, it was. <laughs> no it was way. Nikki. I was, I remember, I was at Sulphur Keys. I was, I was doing some shifts at Sulphur Keys. It was, I think this was in 2012. Yeah, but this will have been in like, you know, like you finish uni dead early in the year. You're finishing like yeah, May. May, May or even April, depending yeah. on when your lectures are. I think I didn't go in a lot to be yeah. fair towards year two and year, year one and year two, especially, especially towards when it get towards like April, I was like, fuck this, I've already passed. I'm not going back in again. You know, when you have to get like 30% to pass the yeah, year. You just do it all in September. I used to make sure, I got, to Christmas. I used to make sure I got 90% in my first module. So I was in no danger of failing the year, no matter how little I went to. And it always done me good. I, I was obviously doing courses that were far, <laughs> yeah. far too easy for me. Um, but yeah, I was, I was sat in Sulphur Keys and I think I, I was, it was when I was changing from my chemistry degree to uh, exercise science. And I said that, oh, I think I'm, I think I'm going to do exercise science instead of chemistry. I, I don't really like chemistry. I don't want to be a chemist. And she went, what would you want to change to that for? You know, there's no money in fitness, right? That's mental. That aged well. That aged so bad. That aged very yeah, when well. I, when I was, so I, I was a, a, a personal trainer. At, so that's where I started my PT career was at Virgin Active. I was there for three years. And I remember... I'd got to the point in, in, in my business where I was sort of packed out on the gym floor, sort of wanted to sort of take the next step. My next step was getting out of the commercial gym and moving over to a gym in, in Didsbury M20 CrossFit as sort of like a hybrid, hybrid gym that would allow me to sort of do online coaching. Cause they wouldn't let me do online coaching in Virgin Active, you know? I think- I wasn't allowed to sell online programs in there. Is M20 like further into like West Didsbury? Yeah, yeah, it's just like a little like- I've, been, I've come back from gym. Warehouse Project once before and Lewis used to live near there and he used to come running past at <laughs> yeah, like five in the, the morning yeah, yeah. and we'd be like, <laughs> yeah. people are up now, we need yeah, to go to but bed. I remember, I remember uh, one of the management teams saying the grass isn't always greener. And I, was that was John? Just like, it was John. How I bet did it you was know John. Because I can just fucking yeah, tell it was, it was John. John. It was John that told me that. And I, like, yeah, it's it's it, you, you get what you make out of the fitness industry. It can... Being a, a, a coach can either be a really enjoyable job, or if you don't put the time and effort in, and you're not passionate about it, it's it's you know it could, it it can be a stressful job. And you know what? I feel like a lot of them from there though at the time we were there are actually still coaching. All I feel the, like all the, percent, the, co all the, the coaches, percentages are actually yeah, really all, good. All the coaches that I worked with, uh, I know Gallon's still coaching. Yeah. Chris Wayne is still coaching. Carl Green Slade's doing well. I don't know. I didn't. Have, I never yeah, knew Carl. No, the, I think Laura Bleas is still Bleas coaching. Is, yeah, she's at uh, the gym in Stockport. Yeah, the, the, there was it, when I, I was really lucky when I started. You were lucky because imagine trying to pick up PT clients next to Tom Gallen. Tom Gallen <laughs> looks like who's the guy off um, Beauty and the Beast? 
gas on. Yeah, he does. Yeah, <laughs> he was beautiful, wasn't he? Oh, he looked Tarzan, yeah, motherfucker. He was. Yeah, I hate people like that. But yeah, there was there was some amazing coaches, amazing coaches in there. You know, I was surrounded by really good coaches, and you know that was a great start to my PT career because I know a lot of coaches can go into like pure gyms and it's all dog eat dog and stealing clients off each other. I didn't have that at, at, at Virgin Active at all. I was, you know, I was really lucky to Just be Just Virgin stole off you instead. Yeah, they did. Every month. <laughs> every month. But you know, I, got, I actually got, I, I didn't actually leave. I ended up getting forced out because I, <laughs> what what we used to do is, I don't know if they do this anymore, but they used to do a, the PT system, how it worked there was for, you would, you would get paid. It's like paid. a pyramid. Yeah, it was like a pyramid, pyramid system. So if you, if you were doing 15 sessions per week, uh, you would get, I think like 16 pounds per hour because the money was paid through Virgin. If you're doing 20 sessions, you'd get 18. If you're doing 25, you got 18. Yeah, but you had to every be doing... time you got up there, they used to bring in a load of new PTs, didn't they? To kind yeah, of like yeah. flush it out so and you, keep you everyone. You basically had to be doing a hundred sessions a month. So 25 sessions a week. And if you were doing that, you were earning two grand a month. Yeah. Which is like, you know, decent, well, it decent, bad for- yeah, decent money. I could, I could survive off it, but you had to be doing that. If you drop below that, you're earning 1500 quid a month. Call, and you, yeah. You fucked. Um, so I used to do exactly a hundred through the books. And then all the extras would be like cash work. Yeah. And yeah. That's do you want what, an extra session this week? Yeah. Do you want a couple of it? Oh, I, well, I, I, I was getting cheap. Did you do him a deal? Because it yeah, was less yeah, than Virgin. Yeah, I was like signing clients up and it was just cash. And yeah. Yeah. So I, I ended up in the car yeah, park. Best thing I ever did was leave because I could, you know, that, that this was when. It's a good start though, yeah, right? No, it was, People yeah, look it was, down it, on it, but it was it's a not. Great, it was a great start. And, you know, like even right, right throughout my PT career, you know, I, I had my coaching business for eight years for six of those years, we had the strong program, which was the online coaching. Um, but I ran, I, I still coached on the gym floor right up until I finished, finished, I, you know, c- coaching on the gym floor for me was, you know, I, I really enjoyed mm. it. I, I loved being in the gym. I still love being in the gym, you know, like I, 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 I don't train as much as I used to, but you know, I love being in the gym filming and creating content and stuff. Um, but yeah, being on the gym floor for me, it, it was something that I really enjoyed about the job. You know, I, I, I like being on the gym floor and speaking to people. I like the banter on the gym floor yeah, with the coaches. Sure. You know, so, so coaching on the gym floor is something that I really enjoyed. Yeah, no, I can imagine that. Then, so is that the same time you were running student nights? So you were you doing that alongside no, the PT? No, that was before. That was before. So. Oh, so you did the student nights before. Yeah. And then you started PT afterwards. Yeah. So I got I got into so when I was at uni because that was probably this is your how first got, start in media. Yeah. This is it? how I got into social media and and camera work really. So when I when I first went to uni, uh, it was like when Facebook had sort of like just really sort of. Oh, I remember everything you sell a Facebook yeah, event yeah. for like. It's like Facebook every event. night, yeah, weren't yeah. it? And everyone used to click if they were going and you. Like, oh, yeah, loads yeah. Of so I, I would, I'd, I'd started on social media quite early, and even when I was at college, I was like, I was like, I was really into it. I was really into like Bebo and MySpace and stuff. And when when I went to uni, Facebook was really taking off, and I'd really got like into like the student nights. I loved going to these student nights, and I saw a bit of a gap in the market for. I was selling student event tickets and stuff, so I created a a Facebook group. It was called Manchester um, Manchester Students uh, Manchester student tickets and um so i'd get all the tickets off all the different promoters and then i'd have like these ticket sellers on bikes that would go and drop off so people were posting the group where they'd want tickets and and sell them tickets 50p commission we got on a lot of them or or 75p sometimes a quid so i was making like i was making like 500 quid a week in fucking 50ps and quids so i was like and and i was a student at the time so i was Mm. like I was buzzing with this. So I, I did that for about six months. And then I eventually I launched my my own student night, which was called Pout at Revolution. I've been to Pout. Yeah. That, and Pout on a Monday. It was Pout on a Monday. Yeah, we had Pout on a Monday. And then um, with my business partners, Matt and Louie, we did rehab on a Wednesday at Birdcage. Birdcage. Yeah, yeah. See, right. So we, I remember that, but I just didn't like Birdcage. Yeah. And there was a point where one of our mates at uni bit one of the bouncer's ears oh, wow. off. Off or he bit it quite savagely. You oh, I probably shouldn't say his name. Yeah, probably not. Leave Edit the name. name out. He used to oh, fucking hell. He used to be in the Marines anyway, so he's a bit of a fucking loose cannon. And he had a little brother that didn't look anything like him. So there was like massive lad, Marine, 
little squat kid and the bouncers were a dick to him and they asked him to leave because he was drunk but it was a student night so you, you think it was alright and they've, he's gone right let me finish my drink and as he's gone to do that the bouncers knocked the drink out of his hand and gone your drink's finished <laughs> And Tom's just turned round and levered three of them. <laughs> but in the scuffle has like bit one of their ears. And there uh, we all got banned yeah, for that. Yeah, you're not going back in. No, but they, it's they, closed they, down. The year yeah. after, well, after I'd left, they signed the AU deal and like there were, everyone was allowed back in. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I weren't that bothered like, but. Yeah, so it, the, so doing the doing the student nights, that's sort of how I got into the, the social media side of things. And, I started taking photos and stuff and making little videos at the events. And yeah. so, so really the student thing. Was student it Matt who was the Mank photographer? Or was yeah, that? we had the Mank photographer. He used to take photos for us there. And Jack, the other one. Jack the magician. Jack, no, Jack Kerwin. Is that the Jack oh, the yeah, magician? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Kerwin coaches with Lewis now. Oh, does or he? Or he was doing last time I spoke to oh, Lewis. no yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we got, got into that. But, uh, you know, as I was getting older, so even when I finished uni, I carried on doing that for three years after. So I was still living the student life and I was... It's hard to 20, get out of it if yeah, you don't know what you're doing I was, though, 20, I was 20, 24 years old and still like living the student life. I was living in Fallowfield and, you know, I was getting getting more and more into the gym. Still going to power on a Monday. Yeah, yeah. So I was getting more and more into the gym and then... Um, we just like the the whole student night scene finished when warehouse projects and like students started not got the, the nights that we did were like cheesy student nights. Yeah. So we went from having started getting a bit yeah, bougie it was after more that, edgy, it? edgy. Yeah. Like you and Lewis were like into the edgy, edgy nights. Ours were oh like Merkage and that. Yeah, ours oh, were cheesy, Merkage. cheesy student nights. Which Pat were, was all right. Yeah, Pat but was it was a bit it, like it, it, Pat it, was a bit more rock market for yeah, a student but it night. wasn't like I mean these it was when, so kid, like. so when kids were going out doing MCAT. You weren't going out doing fucking that shit in. In, in a student night like Pout Weir no. so the, the popularity of that type of student night started dipping and we're thinking do we do we try and launch something different and I was getting into the gym more and more and decided to sort of like yeah, drop it, that it started business. going more towards like that was when like house music really yeah, started yeah, yeah. And, like, and that wasn't our that it was like house thing. and drum and bass and stuff like yeah, that yeah people like, were saving up to go to park life and bigger weekends by then well, so. back then park life was still at Platt Fields, right? Uh, no, it had just moved. Has it just yeah, moved, it to, just moved Park. to Heaton Park? Yeah. yeah, I remember going to the first one. Yeah. Was at Heaton Park. So it was around. Yeah, we were still at uni yeah, then, it around, so it was around uh, yeah, the same it was around time. Around that time. So uh, yeah, then then got into the 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 fitness game like at the start of 2012. It was, and that was so you did the PT. You worked at Virgin Active. Then you moved to the CrossFit gym. Yeah, and then we moved to Train Hill Green. That was like custom built as a CrossFit that was, facility. That was that, it? it's it's I still a still rate it. it's a it's it's one of the best gyms in Manchester for it's like a hybrid CrossFit and bodybuilding body gym. Bodybuilding upstairs, isn't there? Yeah, it's full hammer strength kit upstairs. It's sick. And How then far is that from CrossFit, Total Fitness? Five minutes. It's not far from yours. Really? Yeah. I might have it is a good, it is a good gym. It's owned by Sam Briggs, the CrossFitter. It's the Sam own it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a really good facility. That. So Sorry, we, we were town, there. Like we were there ago. for three years because the gym that we were at previously. This was the the issue that we were having, and this sounds mad. This, but like, they they, they didn't want us filming in there. In the CrossFit gym. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we Is had that to leave. Because maybe you were building your business. And yeah, they were worried yeah. That... So, so that as well, but they were also like, we we don't want you filming. Like, um, people are complaining that you're filming in there and stuff. But it wasn't the case. That was it. Wasn't the members that were complaining that were filming? It was him, the gym owner that was that was that didn't want us like yeah. building a business in there. So we we moved up to train, and they were dead good. They were like, because our business was mainly online. We had we still saw clients one-on-one, -on -one, but they were clients that had been training with us for yeah, like five yeah. years or whatever. It was all my, all my cash sessions. Um, that you so we so, so we moved business. up to we moved up to to train and and based our business there and that just literally became a content creation studio for us. It was basically uh, us paying gym rent was us paying rent to use it as a studio yeah, for filming. Yeah. So we filmed all our content in there. Like we we must have done our exercise library about ten different times in there. We filmed all our social videos in there. We even used the kitchen to film our food prep videos in there. We could host seminars there, have like client meetups and do client sessions. An, a, an amazing gym and like the the like they allowed us really to grow our uh, coaching business because our coaching business was built on video content. I was going to say, like, where made, did that get to at its peak then? 
the the fitness business. Yeah. Was it, what well, was it called? The, strong. Yeah, so yeah, so it was called the, it was called the Strong Program. So I've, we've chatted about this off air. The the biggest mistake we made with that coaching business was going low ticket to way too soon. Yeah, it's hard way, when you yeah yeah you've got to sell yeah. too much because we did you? have we did. We, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like probably at the time you were like we're fucking stealing a living here. Basically, yeah, no, like. no. I've always always enjoyed it, but now like especially working more closely with you and what you're doing with your clients, I w- I honestly wish that. I, there was someone like you that could have helped us back then because we could have done so much more. You know, we yeah, we, it looked from the outside like you had a really good platform. Yeah, like, no, we did. We and we had a big following. That was, you know, we we did. That's have, why you yeah, tweaked yeah. and were like, oh, well, right, we'll sell yeah, something affordable exactly. and get all of them. Yeah, we grew. We grew. It's the, false we, economy. That yeah, we grew our audience quickly in the space of like like a year, and we went we went the low ticket route. Um, what was low ticket? Just out of the low ticket was like hundred quid a month, right? Type type thing. I think it was even it was even less when we started. I think we started at sixty quid at sixty quid a month. Wow, and like your top end, yeah, like, top your end, ideal that was, price that was, was the top. That was that was the top end by the time we'd finished yeah, the wow. hundred quid a month. Um, but you know, we 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 we. we but between really two years, yeah, it was between two. Yeah, it was between. Yeah, I had a business partner. Sasha. Say like, say you want to get. 10 grand, for example, it's only five grand each, which again, yeah, there's nothing yeah. soon knows apart, but in the grand scheme of the stress of running a business, you probably want to get more than five grand out of it for all the stress that you put yeah, yourself yeah. through and the uncertainty. Yeah. So like, you don't realise that like, actually maintaining a hundred clients is- It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And yeah. if you charge them 250 quid, that's 25 bags and you can buy a lot of help at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. five grand each, you don't have a lot left in the pot to actually yeah. go and get help. Yeah, and we never we never scaled it to take on coaches as well. We basically just ran the business. Well, well, you, well you never you never got the chance to because yeah. five grand each. Like, what are you nah, going to pay nah, the there coach? Was nothing, there was nothing else. To, we 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 didn't have the money to. We we were peaking. We, we you don't we, get over nah, that. Hump. Yeah, no, that's we, what we, we try were, and... We were pretty much. I think the the maximum amount we had was one twenty. Yeah. On, on our, we never went over that one twenty, and then you know we we were always flirting between like the eighty and one twenty. Mark, so we, we never, we never, we never cracked on. You with, just never. With that. There's, yeah, there's a yeah. little hill in there, like at the six figure yeah. mark. There's a hill of, have you got enough finance in the business, and have you got time? Yeah, and yeah. And if you don't get over that hump, it can really quickly become like. You, if you get stuck in the valley at the bottom of that hill, it's really difficult to yeah. get out. And of, we, you've we, got to go literally start again. Yeah, we we were we were in that, and and now like we've sort of split the business. Sasha has gone down that route and has done really well for. She's done higher ticket. Yeah, yeah. What's she, she do? What's she doing? And now? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure in in, in terms of numbers. But no, it's, but like, it's just more, what's the model? How oh, does right, it work? Yeah, so it's all. It's more. It's way more personal. Like. Yeah individual program design, that type of thing. A bit like what Sam does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, very, very similar. She doesn't work with CrossFitters. Oh, does she not? No, 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 no. Um, uh, but she, but she, it's more personalised high ticket rather than the low ticket route. And yeah, it, it's it's definitely something now, like looking back that I wish we'd done earlier. I, do, I just don't know whether the... the Market false, was ready for it. No, no, I don't even think that. I think the false sense of like, we've got this big audience... People overestimate that yeah. so much. Like I, we get people like jumping our inbox. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. well, I think I'm going to run a group program because I've got f- like fifteen thousand followers, and I'm thinking, yeah, that'll work once. But look at look, yeah, that'll work once. Yeah, well, your first time you run that, it, you be like, it. oh my, and then you know what it is? It's well, it's not. I don't know what cracks like, but I'm assuming it's like crack. Yeah, like, they, they run it. It's very, it's very easy to set up. It's very low maintenance. Yeah. The, the launch process is quite easy. There's not lots of phone calls. Yeah, it's we, not we, lots we, of craft. the video. We, we, obviously, the video, the creating the video content was my yeah. favorite part it's of the like business. Open, open the doors. Yeah, let everyone buy. Shut the doors. Like we did it with GRA. Yeah, we had yeah. obviously high ticket that went on top of that, which obviously was the main driver of the business. But like we had a six week group program, and you would you would be easily conned into yeah, believing. Yeah. Like yeah. doors open, people. But I remember like sending the email out, and then I'd look at my phone like half an hour later and I'd be like, just made nine grand. Yeah, <laughs> mate, I made 10 hour. grand off a fucking Snapchat. This is what Snapchat I mean. So, you story. Do, so people come in and they do that. Yeah. And they're like, well, that was fucking easy. Yeah, just do it all why the time, just but you do can't. That? Yeah, why don't I just do that every eight weeks? Yeah, we just, and, I think we just burnt through our audience And quick. that's what yeah. happens with these, with, with these, especially younger influencers that get bad advice. Mm-hmm. They come in in the, like not info, but like, you know, people with like 15, 20,000 followers. Yeah. All right. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll just do this. You know, I, I can keep it affordable because I can, I can reach a lot of people. It doesn't. Yeah. It, it doesn't works work. once. It works it, once. Yeah. It doesn't but, work. But then they get addicted to that. Yeah. Well, that was easy and I did that much. So like, 
what, what are you telling me I need to work twice as hard to make the same money? I don't want to do that. Yeah, like, yeah, but that's you, your back's against the wall now. It's the only yeah. choice you've got. And I think you just get like the the because we always had a a a, a big turnover of mm. clients. We were constantly catching back up and catching back up. Yeah, and, and then you had to go out and find a new audience. Then and then you're yeah. paying ads, and then that hundred quid quickly gets eaten up. Yeah, if you're trying to find customers like through Facebook ads, you're looking at what. You basically well, have to no, spend. this was in the fucking golden era of Facebook oh, ads. Oh, okay, turn yeah. it on and the <laughs> yeah, money comes in. Yeah. Cowboy season. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. No, well, there's ways, but like, it's very, it's, yeah, there yeah. used to be no rules, weren't yeah, there? Yeah, it was like, no, yeah, no, it, you put a picture of a no, completely was different a, guy. Yeah, that was it was, like, it, it, our thing was uh, before and after photos. Oh, yeah, we can't do that you anymore. You can't do that anymore, yeah. But that worked really well. Yeah, it did, yeah. Who's running it now? Did you did you give it to someone else? Yeah, one of our clients has taken over. He's still running it, Will. Is yeah. it Will? Yeah. How's he getting on? Yeah, yeah, he does all right for me, yeah. I've known Will for years. He was Will friends Parry. with my ex-girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they knew each other. I don't know if they were yeah. friends and such, but... Yeah, no, it's... Uh, uh, do you know what? It, it's just... It's it's such an amazing job to be a coach. Like, the lives that you impact... Is it people, weird that it's still going in, and, like, you've got nothing to do with it? Um... Don't know. I've never really thought of do it. Do you ever look at it because, like it's because like, my bro- I, I couldn't imagine giving a puppy away, you know but, like, do you ever look you know, at it like... Do you know what? It's, it's weird, right? Although I'm doing something completely different now, it feels like I'm not doing anything different, right? Because I'm still, like, I didn't, especially the back end of the fitness business, I wasn't doing much coaching. Yeah. My, my whole job when I, while I was coaching, and bear in mind, I was doing this sort of stuff for other coaches while I was running the fitness business. I for think I saw that when you three, started doing yeah, that. For you, about, you doing like courses rather yeah, than yeah. like... Yeah, yeah. So I was doing like... Sem- no, I was still doing some one-on-one work with people. So during the back end of the fitness business, you know, um, because people saw the content that we were putting out and the videos that we we're making, you know, I was getting more coaches asking me for help with their content. Yeah, that's so, how it starts with yeah, the B2B so, stuff. So though, I, was doing, I was doing some... Uh, some videos for for other coaches and I was doing like these seminars these like teaching people how to use the smartphones and make videos and stuff but for the majority of that of me being a coach wasn't actually me coaching yeah. because Sasha did a lot of the coaching I did a lot of the so I was creating content for the business and I was editing the videos and and stuff so it's weird it, it, it's like it's just been this like transition over like five years where it's not felt like one month I was doing this coaching business mm. and then it stopped. So I stopped it just before COVID. It was like I stopped and then I moved on to like doing all this filming and editing and, and stuff. It, it feels like it's just been one long thing. So it doesn't feel like I've actually stopped that business. It feels like it's sort of just like yeah. merged no, into this I, thing, yeah. into this. You're in a similar, sim, similar position. Well, I was position obviously because, coaching the coaches at GRT. Yeah. So like... I was doing that and then we were running one-off courses because yeah, we had that yeah. many people like, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Can you help me with that? I was like, right. I tried to help as many people as I could for free. Yeah. And I used to be like, I'm not a business coach. Like, I don't, you know, you can ask me, but they, they got so much that I was like, right, I'm going to have to start charging for this because I'm I'm a fucking bleeding yeah, art and mad. I struggle exactly to say no. Same, yeah. So like, right, I'm going to have to start putting on like a course. So I did a 10 week course said, right, it's a thousand pound to 10 spaces, sent the email, 10, done <laughs> like five minutes. And I was like, well, that was easy. Um, so we did that and I was coaching these coaches and obviously coaching my staff. And I was like, well, this is essentially the fucking same here, realistically. So we just started doing more of that. And then it got to a point where I was like, right, well, I'm, I'm enjoying this a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Cause you've got, you, you, like, you've got, a, you've got, a, you've got to do what you enjoy doing. And, you know, it, it's a, it's a weird one. Cause we're still in the fitness industry. It doesn't feel like you've done I, I, I would like, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it is for you, but it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything differently because I'm still in the same Mine is a little bit because I remember when I started doing business content, I started talking about business. People were very like, people that were business coaches were being very like, oh, he's talking about business now. And I'm like, well, I have run one. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's pretty fucking successful. I am talking from some sort of experience yeah, do, I get, I, yeah, I get, I, I do get that actually because I get a bit of heat off, uh, off like other fitness videographers don't really like what I put, like what. Yeah, I because you're yeah. saying basically like you don't need to. Yeah, you, you do. need to have a videographer. Yeah, yeah. So, so in in some ways, I do. You know, if you if you're if you're if if you're under earning under five k five k a month now, most, we say um, most you don't I mean, need a videographer. The only you reason can our coaches yourself. get a videographer yeah. is because we pay for it. Yeah, like, yeah. It, you know, only are like. 
the guys that are doing like 30 grand a month in our program really have videographers. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think maybe it, Ryan is probably the only one that has a videographer that isn't yeah, isn't doing like yeah, 30, man, 40 I mean, grand a month. You could you could you can you can do this yourself. You can create onboarding videos, education portal videos, and most importantly, social media content so easily from your phone now. It's you know, it's it, it's it's so easy to create video content now straight from your phone. If you're organised, you can do it yourself. Do you so. think that's then maybe them them worrying about the relevancy though? Because like a lot of them will have been in fitness before social media got to the place where it is now. You built your business in social media the way because I think that that's one of the things where like people were people were very like worried about me getting into business coaching because they're obviously oh, I I have my own business, but a lot of them either did it with other people. Like they did it as part of larger groups or they did it back when it was fucking in its infancy and it, the, the landscape looked nothing like yeah. it does now. Yeah, you, And well, obviously it's changed since I did it, to be honest, but I'll hold my hands up and say that. Yeah. Whereas I think a lot of people are like, oh God, like the stuff that he's going to be saying is actually relevant now, whereas the stuff that yeah, I'm saying- Yeah, you, because you, you, know, you, you were running a million pound fitness business. What, two, uh, how long ago was it? that you stopped GRT. Oh, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, exactly. I it's... mean, the, obviously the final, when, when we actually did the seven figures, it wasn't just through yeah, yeah, yeah. coaching oh, yeah, fitness course, clients. Yeah. It was like but... an amalgamation of we, what we had was like the GRT Academy, which was coaching coaches to coach. It wasn't business. There was no yeah, business it was strategy. Coach, yeah. It was coaching coaches to coach. So it was essentially within fitness. It was all within fitness. There was no business or strategy or marketing and stuff like that. Um, but that's yeah. That's when that's when we got to that point. Yeah, it's such an ever changing landscape as well, especially with especially with marketing and social media. Look how different it is now to compa even compared to like like when I was creating content for my coaching business. It's so much different to how like we help our clients with their yeah, marketing it, now. I think you've still got a while. It does, it's not this. People, I think, have got the concept that it's this ever-changing landscape like every two months, and it's not. No, it's not two months, It's like yeah. three years. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was static image and deep, you know, thought-out, thoughtful Long posts. Yeah, then like, it to, like, emotional. graphics and... Yeah, then it did... Well, it only did that for a little bit. That was more of a yeah, transition it was, period, it was about, really. Yeah. It, was, it was static image and copy. Yeah. It was copy and image for years. Yeah, yeah. Three to five years. And then it started transition. It didn't really know what it was doing at first. There was that carousel era. Yeah, yeah. And then it was like, it's settled Moved on video, video now. Yeah. And it's probably going to be no, like yeah, this video, for the video, next three to five years again. I think even longer. I think Maybe until to, yeah. there's another form of yeah. way of consuming content, whether it's virtual reality or... Yeah, yeah. But or, it'll still be a format of video. Yeah. Of, yeah, of moving image. You'll have shit where you can watch podcasts in the corner of your eye on a yeah, fucking contact sick. lens soon. It'll be madness. Popping up out your watch. Holograms and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, but every time I think of hologram, I always think of fucking Darth Sidious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Every time someone says holograms, I always just think of this little hooded character like telling me to do bad shit. <laughs> don't know whether that's a personality flaw or not. Probably. But yeah, so that's that's really it full circle then. And then... What was the transition like? Obviously, you've now you've got a course, and now you exclusively work with us. That what what was that like? Because that was a bit weird. What the the transition? Yeah, because the business has changed quite a lot really since since we did that. So we 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 so the business was was built off. We would work one on one filming with clients, right? So when. And the, and really, the business took took off just like just before like TikTok came in and it re and reels started. So it was like really like heavy, you video. know, video content, yeah. right? So we were working one on one with with uh, with like clients. We had clients work that we work with on like a monthly basis, and you know, we were creating um, social media content for them, and then we were saying to them, right? So if you want to grow your accounts, right? You've got to be posting daily video, and but we were selling video packages where we would film like ten Instagram reels for them in a the day. Yeah, for right? sure. So, so like, like the right, cost so got, here's yeah. here's a third of your monthly marketing. It was yeah, nearly but useless. You, you just need to go away and do another twenty videos. So what we ended up doing was creating like tutorials on how they could film themselves mm. on top of like the stuff that we were doing for them. And what we found was they were getting. The, our clients were getting just as good results with the videos that we we were making off the back of our tutorials from the ones that we were creating for them. Mm. 
So we just saw a gap in the market that there wasn't anyone really doing. Uh, teaching you know, teaching, it, teaching yeah. coaches how to create, how to create, you know, actual decent content when, and use their phones properly as, as video cameras. So, um, yeah, we started creating these tutorials, then built the course out and, um, yeah. And then more recently just work, working with you. And now it's, it's more sort of a, 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 a social media marketing agency. So we're doing the, obviously we're doing the content plans for the CEO clients and supporting them creating the content and working with the videographers of your, of, of the clients. So yeah, I just, I, I love it. I love, I love, you know, social media gets stick and, but I love it. I love consuming it. I love creating it. I love talking about no, it. You're I could attached to my fucking YouTube. I see yeah, how I love much it. YouTube I love, you watch on a I, daily I love, basis. I, yeah, I love I it. I can't believe you get I, anything done. Yeah, I don't, I don't watch any TV. I literally only watch YouTube and social media short form new age of i've got adhd so short form content for me is fucking sick because i can i can watch something learn something in a minute and just switch oh, but you on get to the lost next in one. it for hours though yeah, because you don't, don't lose attention because the video yeah, keeps changing yeah. it's meant to love it <laughs> <laughs> and on that point simon where can people find you uh strong underscore media on instagram and tiktok definitely tiktok yeah, I smash the back doors out of TikTok. Smash the back Love doors it. out of TikTok. Probably, I probably watch more TikTok than Instagram. I just get caught on reels. It doesn't matter where it is. Like yeah, TikTok they're, or they're pretty much Instagram. the same, but I, I probably watch. I feel like TikTok's a bit more creative for, for the stuff that I There's like more consuming. Different stu- you see different yeah, yeah, stuff on yeah. TikTok, I Yeah, find. you do. Yeah, I like, yeah. It's a bit more creative uh, TikTok People don't than post as much random shit on Instagram. Yeah. I feel like people post random shit on TikTok, like... There'll be one curated video, but then there'll be like nine of them, like just getting out of the car and jumping in a puddle or something yeah, like that. You're yeah. like, you film no. that? And it's got the, probably the most likes on the page. Yeah, a million views. I know, it's scary. But yeah, thank you very much, mate. No problem, mate.